Now we're live? Okay. Yeah. Testing. Everybody yeah. talk. Everybody say something. So no. you killing shot. <laughs> there. Wait. Yeah, I, I was about to get tea. My bad. Alright, alright. Now we're live? Okay. Yeah. Testing. Everybody yeah. talk. Everybody say something yeah. like you can hear. Yeah. Alright, cool, guys. So I'm gonna uh, put some... You killing shot. Well, John, can you put those links in the chat? Uh, the ones that uh, Dean sent us? Uh, so, hello everybody. It's been a while since we used to stream. But Twitch was, like, acting the fool, so, I mean, we're going to have to do it this way. Uh, anywho, we got ways. We have ways to do streams, and this is one of the ways. So, thanks, guys, for coming on in. Uh, we're we're going to be doing some art talk um, on this game that our, one of our students, Brendan, has done. And then we're also going to do Q&A, as we usually do towards the end. And I'm going to be painting as well uh, as we're just talking talking about stuff like game development, how anybody can make a video game these days, um, including Dean and myself. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm going to ask Dean questions too, like things that you guys might not know anything about, and we'll go right over your guys' heads. But I'll try to explain it in a way that makes sense. Um, like we were talking before, right? Like I, I explained it in, in, a, in a way that I think could make sense for those who do not know anything about like blueprints or coding inside of the actual um, <clears throat> in the actual gaming engines but it's all good it's all good so I got mm. some screenshots um, I don't know if you guys can see what I see I don't think you guys can oh actually you know what you guys can join the the go to oh, meeting that's um, actually a great idea um, just make sure you guys mute your mics as you're in or but it's all good for phone it's all good so I got mm. some screenshots um, yeah, sure. I don't know if yeah, you so guys you, you click on that I link. See. I don't think so you please guys join can. my meeting. Well, actually, you know what? You guys can join the, the, the go to meeting. That's well. a really great you idea. You should be able to see it without <laughs> going Just make sure you guys can see it. Right, okay. Your game on Twitch. But it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. So I got some screenshots. Yeah, sure. I don't know if you guys can click on that link. I don't think you guys can join my meeting. Well, actually, you know what? You guys can join the the go to meeting. That's a really great idea. You should be able to see it without going Just make sure you guys can see it. Right, okay. Your game on Twitch. But it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. So I got some screenshots. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't know if yeah, you so guys you can see that link. I don't think you guys can. Oh, actually, yeah. you know what? You guys can join the uh, the go-to uh, meeting. That's a really great idea. Should be able to see what that. Just make sure you guys are on. Right, okay. Your yeah. game yeah. is on Twitch, yeah. Yeah. but it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. So I got some screenshots. Yeah, sure. I don't know if you guys can see that link. I don't think you guys can. Oh, actually, you know what? You guys can join the the go-to meeting. That's a really great idea. Should be able to see what that. Just make sure you guys are on. Right, okay. Your game is on Twitch, but it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. So I got some screenshots. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't know if yeah, you guys so can join that link. I don't think you guys can join that link. Actually, you know what? You guys can join the go-to meeting. You should be able to see it without having to go in. Just make sure you have a sword. Right, okay. You're all game on Twitch. But it's all good. Yeah, yeah it's all good. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, so I got some free shots. Yeah, sure. I don't know if you guys can join that link. I don't think you guys can join that link. Actually, you know what? You guys can join the go-to meeting. You should be able to see it without having to go in. Just make sure you have a sword. Right, okay. You're all game on Twitch. But it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. So I got some free shots. Are we good now? Yeah, it should be good now. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, like I was saying, it's um <laughs> it's a, a, a strategy game where um um it's based on a Japanese version of chess. And um we're trying to take that board game concept and bring it into a video game. Um yeah, we've got lots of different things that we can do in a video ga video game in comparison to a board game. Like um, we can really immerse you into that world, and we can tell tell little bits of lore about the characters and develop like um, huge lore around each of the factions that you're playing, and also display things much clearly than you can in a board game. So yeah, that's what we're going for. And um, if you if you want more info on it, it's probably best just to check out our Kickstarter video. It's all explained there. 
Yeah, that sounds cool, man. I'm down. <clears throat> <clears throat> so it's just basically like an epic ass like uh, board game, right? Uh, I was like chess like wow. board game. Yeah, chess like board game, but we've put a massive emphasis on the character design and trying to make the armies look really cool and have like cool stories behind them. And they all have their own unique movement and um, feel to them when, when you're facing off against each other as well. Yeah, cool. So let's look at some of the artwork that um, Brendan has did for it too, just because we are mostly like an art like inspired thing, you know? And so yeah. Let's go ahead and look at what we got. Let me see if we can go through here. Brendan did all of the character models for the game. Yeah, y'all. Add a boy. Yeah, yeah. Add a boy. Yeah, y'all. So how was that? How, how did that go? Because I know remember we had a conversation like about months ago about mm. like how it was difficult to kind of well because normally you in production you would have a concept artist, mm -hmm. and then your modeler, but you were like the concept <laughs> artist and modeler. Yeah, I was pretty much like the guru, you know, of the characters. I, uh, Dean and I like did a lot of development about you know what. <laughs> You know what the character is like the starting point you know like well this like the archangel is you know this and this and this all right well what do we want to show about that it was really cool because we got to um you know really develop the characters from the very very get-go and we didn't have a bunch of producers breathing down our necks you know <laughs> be like oh well we have to merchandise this shit so you know you have to make sure that it's got big boobs and blah 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 you know <laughs> So, uh, well, let me just say, she needs some big boobs. Yeah, she does. I think she so, needs some big boobs. you made mistakes. You made great <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> we did have a conversation about a penis at some stage. Yeah, yeah. I was whether like, well, to cover the penis or um, leave it <laughs> leave it dangling. <laughs> did, did you see that? Uh, I forget what game it was, where they had like penis physics. And it's like, uh, one of the kids, like, it's totally like dynamic penis, flopping around. Crazy. <laughs> so silly, man. Oh, uh, yeah. No, it was, it was really cool because uh, Dean pretty much just uh, came up with a basic idea. Uh, and then from there, I got to play pretty much every single part of the character developer all the way through, you know. Um, anywhere from just blocking out the, the model in ZBrush and, you know, coming up with different shape language to really portray, like, what type of chess piece this is, you know. Like, is this the little pawn piece that's, uh, you know, over in a corner or is this, like, the main super bishop, you know. Um, so we got to uh, implement a lot of those things into the character development as we went. So it was really cool to just kind of bounce ideas off of Dean and, you know, you know, back and forth and just, you know, hey, does this work? Does that work? What do you think of this? Uh, and then, you know, these, these blockout models, like this, uh, the Archangel, um, you know, a couple days, maybe two days to block that out. Wow. Um, it was really nice because it, and you just, you know, boom, 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 hey, you know. This is what we think. Uh, let's change this and this, uh, and then kind of move forward. So, uh, hold, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, White Caitlin joined the conversation. Yo, you see your face. Yo. You have to say a noise. You have to make a noise. Okay. What? <laughs> <There you go. laughs> no one can see your face. Only me and everyone that was in the conversation. You son of a bitch. <laughs> so I guess we have a full party, man. We can go on a race. Just Caitlin's face. Oh, there you go. There's your face. All right. Caleb Talk's face. <clears throat> yeah, we're in the middle of uh, talking about uh, my, one of my students and uh, his buddy's game that they're working on. They're using Unreal yeah. 2. So, like, we're... Uh, Unreal 2? That's old. <laughs> we're we're going super old school, man. You stupid. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to say that, too, as soon as I said that. Who's Dean and yeah. Brendan? They are using Unreal 4 2. Oh, so you wait, so Dean, Dean, and Brendan are the guys making it, or? Yes, we are. They're, yeah. they're making this game, yeah. So they, they actually yes, sir. they uh, Kickstarter and everything. Here you can check. Oh, it out. sweet. Hey, you can check well, it nice out. Well, nice you guys. Know. I'm Kalen. Hey, right. go, man. Hey. <laughs> And so, yeah, we're we're a pretty small team as well. So um, it's just three guys working on this game. So, like Brendan said, he had a um, basically the whole of the characters um, were his responsibility, and that's kind of what you get when you're working in a small team. You have to kind of um, fill the gaps, so to speak, because you're not going to have every base covered with your with your skill set. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's or you're uh, gonna have to expand your skill set. Yeah, definitely. Expand your skill set. Right? That's just a little, right? 
Yeah. It's a great way to learn stuff because, um, like, if you if you've got a game to make, there's no going back. You can't say, "Oh, I'll leave that for later." You need to learn how to do it. You le- need to learn how to solve that problem. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah and and uh, you know, uh, Ollie, you just sent me a little sketch back link. Yeah, Sweet. fresh off the boat. Fresh off this boat. Yeah. Wait for it to load. <laughs> for anyone who uh, is ever into indie development. Um, or like in 3D modeling or of anything of that sort, I highly recommend you use this uh, site called Sketchfab for 3D models. Um, I, I know a lot of indie developers use this thing, and it's freaking awesome. Basically, you get to see the, the, the concept. Can you guys, uh, Caitlin, if you go, I don't know if you could see what was written earlier in the conversation. Here, let me let me just show it. I don't you think it. So, uh, Caitlin, when you join the uh, the go to meeting, you'll see that there's a link in the Skype chat. Yeah, um, you just come in and just turn off your audio, pretty much, because you can just hear me through Skype. You don't have to hear me through the go-to meeting or through um, anything other than that, right? And then uh, turn off your mic too when you join. But you just click on that link. It's going to ask you to download some sort of temporary file, and then you just put in the meeting ID. Yeah. Okay. And then you can see my screen live instead of going to the to the actual. Oh, uh, okay. Wait. So it says. Okay. Yeah. So you just says- click that link. And it's going to ask you to put an ID, and the meeting ID is right there, 428. Yeah, but th- but it didn't ask me that. It asked me to select audio. No, what you're saying is on GoToMeeting, just don't use any audio at all. Yeah, because we're in uh, Skype, yeah. There's no reason for it. Um, <clears throat> so, this is cool, man. Yeah. This is to scale. Yeah. He's, he's as big as, like, a, a action figure. Yeah, like, super kidding. action figure. Yeah. It's a G.I. Joe, man. <laughs> Yeah, this is cool, man. I love this. I love this place, man. Like, there's like, um, there's people who only live on Sketchfab, and yeah. they like make like 3D compositions, like like illustrations. Like when you first click on it, it looks like a 2D illustration, but then you can like you know zoom around and look. What? It's cool. Mm. Yeah, it's really cool. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah they, they just use this more often, especially for uh, yeah any of your. 3D Don't look up his skirt, dude. Come on. Uh, really? Yeah, you know, uh, not, look at his dick. So this is not. You know what, guys? Don't back their Kickstarter because there's no dick. <laughs> no, I made a grave mistake. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But dude, this is this is rad. Actually, I like how we we. Yeah, one of the like really a- really cool things about uh, designing these guys was that um, we had to take into account that uh, most of the game was going to be like in darkness. Because right, the sun, like the, on the level that we have uh, going, like the sun sets in the very beginning of the game, and then you have basically until the sun rises to finish your match. Otherwise, everybody gets blown to smithereens. So one of the um, interesting things that we, uh, the hurdles that we had to get over for the character design was, uh, like, how do you identify these characters when it's like, you know, almost pitch, <laughs> not pitch black, but like really, really dark, you know? So um, we took into, like, uh, emissive um, maps uh, and, like, glowy parts and tits and bits, you know? So um, really being able to use, like, different patterns and stuff for each character to identify really quickly what piece you're looking at, you know, and, like, you know, express personality and, you know, uh, that kind of thing. So it was really a fun challenge. Challenging challenge, but yeah. fun challenge. And the silhouette played a big part of that as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Getting each character with a really unique silhouette. We're gonna put the 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 links of the Sketchfab for everyone else to check out. Yeah, Thanks. absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. So these guys, by the way, are um, like sentient machines, like robots that have um, taken on like a. They've become for. It goes into much into great detail in the backstory, but I won't go into that now. But essentially, yeah. <laughs> they're ex- religious extremist sentient machines. Yeah. And if you want to know why, you'll have to go and um, figure it out, uh, read the um, read the lore and things, and discover the lore in the game. Yeah, but, um, you, you there's guys, a lot of religious iconography and machinery in each of these models. Do you guys? <laughs> Do you guys do your own streams too? I thought, like, or like, you guys hosted your own like YouTube channels and stuff. For yeah, it. yeah, we stream every week because we're trying to open up the, like the development process. So anyone that's um, interested in learning about game development, <coughs> we try and um, stream pretty much every aspect of game development from 
coding in Unreal to 3D modeling. Brendan comes on sometimes and shows um, what he's working on with his modeling. And then we go even go into some of the business side of things and how to um, organize your studio and um, how to prepare for Kickstarter. We've just done a stream yesterday on um, how we was preparing for Kickstarter right from the get-go and how the game was built around the Kickstarter funding model in in some parts as well. It wasn't massively influenced by by Kickstarter, but there was definitely a factor of Kickstarter in the game design. Are you guys uh, coding it with um, C++ or are you doing blueprints? A little bit of both. Um, mainly blueprints, but... Um, we sometimes make our own nodes and things in Unreal um, using C++ to to help us out because there's some things that some limitations to blueprints, but yeah, mainly blueprints. It's really really intuitive. Yeah, we, me and Ken love it. Um, yeah, we should look into more of that C++ thing, your own nodes for sure, man. That's actually I forgot you can do that. <laughs> oh, like yeah. there's there would be some nodes like there's like I'm like. Why don't they have a node for this thing? <laughs> definitely have a yeah. thing, right? I feel and like if you've got something I, that you're using a lot, like um, you've got a function that you're using a lot, and it's a huge blueprint, you can converge that in C++ down to one node, and then just call that node in any other blueprint. That's pretty um, useful sometimes. That's, that's pretty clever. <laughs> well, what were you going to say, Caleb? No, well, that kind of just... Uh, <laughs> you, you well, I mean, an argument and he say, destroyed it. I, it. I wouldn't know what to put in C++ because I feel like I'm still learning blueprints, so I don't know what blueprints can't do yet. Like if I, mm. whenever I run up against something in blueprints that I can't do, I assume it's because I don't know how I don't know well enough how blueprints work. Not that blueprints are faulted in something. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. There, there's a know, little I, I always both. like will continue digging and digging and digging until I can figure out how to do it in blueprints. Um, yeah, yeah I'm but pretty that's much the clever thing though. Like what Dina's saying, I mean, he, he, like you might be right, Ken. Like because for me, I, I always feel like I, if I just dig deep enough, eventually I fix the problem, right? Yeah. Or like we 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 work the wiring, and then, so it's a lot more efficient and cleaner, right? Mm. And that's something that we would continue. And for those of you who are like. Or like have no idea what we're talking about. Let me give you a kind of basic, <laughs> basic, basic we'll idea of what this, this is. And I'll demonstrate actually in Photoshop. Um, so, you know, a lot of people actually, even on my Facebook, uh, like my, a lot of my fans have been really curious about this whole Unreal and using it for visual development. And you know, when mm. I first was using it, like, and I actually talked with a concept artist last night about it, and he he's been using it like for almost all of his work as a visual development tool, right? I Wait, mean, oh, why oh, not? They have a great. Are you, on, um, are you on Twitch right now? No, I'm on UStream. Oh, okay. Yeah, Twitch wasn't working, so we're on UStream. Um, uh, John, can you send them the link? Um, so, <clears throat> yeah. So when I when I first started using Unreal, I was like just modeling basic geometry. I mean, I'm sure some of you guys remember what I was doing with Lab. That was pretty much my experiment with the visual um, visual components of uh, Unreal was like just learning how to control and manipulate lighting and rendering and understand and, and it, it didn't take me too long um, but there's like some things that I wanted to do which was like to create an interactive concept right I see right like a concept where you'd be like here's your concept walk inside of it and then they'd be like whoa what and then one of the things I wanted to do and I probably still will do in the future is where like you can go into like there would be 3D models or whatever and you can walk in and then you turn on the lights and there's three like badass like soldiers that mm -hmm. I designed. And the director could like walk in this environment and walk around it and look at underneath their skirt, you know? And stuff like that. <laughs> and be like, Where's the dick? You know? <laughs> and, and You don't know how to design nothing. You do Eric. not know how to design nothing. Where's my dick? <laughs> and so uh, I thought that was a great idea, right? And I, I still think it's going to be something that's going to happen. Like, you know how it went from, like, you know, traditional, like, traditional drawing and to, like, digital drawing, like, 2D, digi, and then it went from 3D, right? The, the next evolution is clearly going to be interactive plus yeah. VR, right? Like, where you can actually, like, 
experience the concept, and and it's already happening in ArcViz, in the interior design world, right? Like they're already doing it, like where you can see your model home, like in VR, before they go and build it, and it's to wow. specs and it's to scale, so you really get a good sense of the space. Yeah, I want that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of what's, what's happened is like there's a lot of game companies that have been shutting down, right? Because they just don't have enough money. And the games are too big, um, and they don't they don't make enough money, right? Mm. And so a lot of companies have been shutting down. And what ha was that has happened is you have this big company spread up into like now like a bunch of people like out in the market again, and some of these people get together and say, you know, let's make our own game. And there was a story about some guys, um, I think that left, uh, what was this, Irrational Games, the guys who did Bioshock, some, some people from there, I believe, oh, I don't yeah. know if they're exactly, I don't have my facts straight on this, but I know, someone told me this and I thought it was it's crazy. Facts, right? Yeah, but the idea is that they left and they heard about this, like, interior design stuff, right? And they're like, well, they're like, you know, they're game developers, like a lot of them were like, you know, modelers and, um, you know, some of them were programmers, and they're like, well, we can, like, make a fucking bedroom you know like where you can walk around and so they they offered their services to like some of the biggest like interior and like uh, real estate like companies and say hey we can do this thing where you can have a virtual experience of your of your um mm. your, your house and so like game developers ended up building like mock houses and all of a sudden made like you know four or five ten times more than they were making when they were working for Game studio. Ah, right. And I right. suppose the good thing about doing it in a game engine is that you can have things moving around in your scene. Oh, like yeah. You can have different light switching on and um, dude, dude, effects like there, moving there's, around. There's so, so much. There's so yeah. much, right? Exactly. There's so much you can do. Exactly. And and so, anyways, when I first started, like that's kind of like so. I used Unreal to to because I'm a visual guy, right? So I used it you, mm. initially as a visual tool, and then I went to like well. Like, as we were talking, and getting back to kind of where, why I even wanted to start talking about this and try to get people context, Blueprints. Basically, Unreal has created a system, a node-based programming system, where you would have just a bunch of nodes that connect to other nodes that create some sort of logic that can make something like turn on a light by pressing K, right? And Always my favorite test button. Yeah. K and right. right. K and F. I'm starting to like F. Because it's right next to Wasdy. But anyway, you can input whatever you want. That's the beauty, right? My case. <clears throat> and so, you know, something like that. And I was doing that. I was like, hey, I can turn on a light. What else can I do? I was, like, I was moving a box. And I was like, well, what else can I do? If I can move a box, then I can make a door open, surely. Right? And then all of a sudden, I was like making a video game. Right? And I was like, whoa. Like, this is not as hard. And I'm not trying to say that it's easy. It's just not, like, like dauntingly hard. Like, programming before was just fucking words. Yeah, yeah. And and was, words that aren't even, it, like, they're like columns. You know? like you have to, It's like, not approachable, is it? Yeah, you have to, like, scroll all the way down to or have it on a different tab. Or, you know, it's, like, it's, it's clearly, like, if they made it, I think, like, when you showed me in the note, plus plus whatever notepad no plus plus like that was a lot more intuitive right but before they didn't have color coded for the logic or anything either mm -hmm. so everything was just like clean black and white text for miles right and if you make one mistake it doesn't work if there's one grammatical <laughs> error in a code it doesn't work but with yeah. notes and, and there, there was you can't time, make those mistakes yeah and there was a time where you couldn't even see where that was at. You just had to li literally read all your code, right? Obviously, coding has gotten so much easier. Like, like I said, oh, yeah. you have ways for you to find the where the bug is at in the code. But, but yeah, like you were saying, like, you, <coughs> as you were saying, like, Blueprints makes it so they tell you exactly where and what node, and it's, it's visually based so you can see, almost see exactly why it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you, you'll test out a, like, you'll test out a series of things. So I'm going to try this with this, you know, with this node, and then I'm going to try with this node, and then do this. So technically, it should do the thing that I wanted to do. And then you yeah. press play, and then all of a sudden, it doesn't do it. Or it does, like, a like a weird version of what you wanted to do. Mm. And you, But then you, when you see it, you see, like, oh, like, I wanted the box to stop moving when I press K, but since I have these two, like, nodes, like, there's no condition to that. The, the game has no way of knowing that that's what I wanted to do, mm. right? 
and we, like we were talking before this Skype conversation, like blueprints and, and I think coding in general, to me is like it's become very clear. It's and it's very clear about like telling the game what not to do more yeah. than just telling it what to do. Like it's easy to tell it what to do, but it's reminding it also please don't do this or this or that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't like, even like think, telling you don't about, even think about that. <laughs> yeah, and that yeah. really got my guys to ragdoll. I was like, "Oh yeah, this is awesome! I'm gonna." Like, that's all I wanted to do was make a game where you could just like push people off of buildings. And, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a like, dream come true! I can actually do this, so I did it. And and I so I made it so that when the guys die, they ragdoll, and then um, they go like, you know, flying across the landscape. But then I noticed that, like the hit noise kept happening, like no damn, no life was coming off of me because they were like fighting me, but no life was going down. But that noise kept happening, and I was just like, "What? What is that noise? Why does it keep doing that?" And I realized is because when you tell something to ragdoll, you just tell the mesh to ragdoll. That says nothing about the rest of the player. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Or, or the rest. So, of the I'm usually de demonstrating too what, what that looks like. Right? <laughs> like so, so here's like the ragdoll, right? And that is a mesh, but this is like the capsule node or whatever, like whatever is representing like meshes, collision, like, life, still, all that stuff. Still exists. It still exists. So like it's ragdolling, but there's like a thing, and it's like bouncing off of stuff, and it's wow. it's like yeah. it can even it probably can still be alive and just, like chase Kalen. It's like the ragdolling thing. So what basically <laughs> what Kalen had to do is like when something dies. Also, tell it that it's really dead, please. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your character's made up of loads of different pieces. Most of them will be invisible, and then yeah. the ragdoll is just one of those pieces. So invisible. all the other pieces will still be. Uh, yeah, you, so you have to tell the game. Yeah, you have to tell the game like turn everything off, fire everything. Fire everything. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it's it's one of those things. Like for example, right now the issue I'm running into. So I have my game. I have a title <laughs> screen, and it's awesome. And it's like it's it plays music and there's like narration and it's cool and it's like it's like a camera move and it's like all this kind of stuff. It's really cool. It was really easy to actually set up and I was like awesome. And it's like it took me about an hour to do it and I was like this is badass. And then I have like a start button and a and a controls button. So it's just like the controls. I was like oh all this stuff is easy done, right? And then so when you play the game, you know John was playing it and he was playing it and I was like well go can you play test like go back to the title screen see if it works for you. And it did, but there's a separate UI that is called into the actual game when you start to play that is meant for like paying attention to certain like aspects of the, the gameplay. And the game does not know that it should turn that off. And so when it goes back to the title screen, it's like the, you see that UI over there, and I'm like, God damn it, right? Because <laughs> I need to, like, you, you, it's intuitive that it should just go away. But if you don't tell the game that, it's like, hey, yeah, you said insane. you said to call it, so I'm leaving in here. You didn't even say anything. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what? You know, and, I'm, and my, my fist is in the air and everything, right? And so, and that's what I was working on right now. And it, it's so, so funny. Something as simple as that, like turning that off, like it's clear to me that it's going to take me probably another like half an hour to an hour just to make that thing work the way I want it to work without mm. it crashing the game, you know? Because it's a, it's a, I started run, trying to fix it, it kept on crashing. Because I kept on going into infinite logics, right? Like logic that were like, it would go on forever. And so there's just like, it could it, it will never stop and then basically just crash your game, right? And yeah. I was like, why? What the? And you, you gave me some, uh, a good suggestion earlier before we started, you know, with custom events. And I was like, oh, crap. But I didn't have a chance to try. But, you know, yeah, like, you have we know what really that means specific. because we're messing with it, right? And yeah, and it's funny because Kalen and I we were doing that too. Like we had a very simple problem to make or solve. When you touch something, it makes noise. That's it. That's all. <laughs> that's all it is. Like when you touch something, it makes noise. Oh, not not only that, but we can like change the furniture. So if it's like a like if it's a chair, it will make noise, and then I can just duplicate that chair, right? I can duplicate yep. the chair, but then now turn it into let's say a a couch, right? But it'll have all the same coding mm -hmm. blueprints as the chair, so that way I don't have to like make individual things, right? 
rewrite. It's, 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 a, it's a workflow thing, right? Yeah. So you don't, I can design levels without like constantly copying and pasting, you know? We've set up all of our characters in a very similar way. So every unit has like the um, an, empty, an empty unit, an empty blueprint. And then we just use that as the parent and we put our um, saint mesh into this particular one. And then we put our archangel mesh into this particular one. And we set the movement for each of the units. In. Yeah. So, it's so you start off with one base unit and then we customize it to be a saint or an archangel or a um an yeah. data purge or something. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So just like your chair example there where you've got one base thing and then you set it to be a chair or a couch or something. Yeah. And and <laughs> Kayla and I sat there for like almost three hours trying to solve this simple problem. Right? Because we didn't really know anything about this stuff. Like we, we were still like came up with a really funky solution that works. But that's the cool thing about like blueprints and coding and stuff it's like just find a way that works and it was like the most horribly inefficient way to do it and if you made like a a, a shippable like game that people are paying mm. for you probably wouldn't want to do it that way but it was cool the solution that we were able to find was just like this works and hey we just figured something out and that's the cool I know. it goes back to like what you said before it's like the the visual scripting is approachable for people who don't know any of this, don't mm. know the program or know how to do any of this stuff. And 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 with you know indie independent games being like an ever growing market and then having a tool like this at your disposal, mm. it's gonna just like if you thought it was growing fast before, like watch next year, two years from now, like Yeah. yeah. Well so I started in September last year without any programming experience whatsoever and I just sat down and said I'm gonna learn it and I'm yeah. gonna try and build a game so that I can learn it because I know when I'm building a game I'm gonna come up against challenges that I have to work a way around I have to try and figure out a way to do it um, in order to make the game because there's no there's no going back there's no trying to um, go off and do a different task I have to get that task done and sometimes it's a great feeling you know when you finally get something up and running I found myself in the kitchen making a cup of tea ten minutes later still like buzzing you know still like <laughs> oh I just I just did that I just did yeah. exactly the me, game is doing exactly what I want it to do and it's a good feeling yeah, let me tell you something like uh, when I was going to WonderCon I um I had like my uh, tablet and I was just like trying to figure out a problem I had but I was drawing it out. I was just drawing like the nodes. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like basically play testing in my brain. I was like, okay, so if I hit play, this should technically work, right? And I was like, oh, it can't because like this logic is completely off. Okay, then we draw that. And it is, it is such a, it was fun, man. It was like, I was talking to Kalen about this too. I was like, you know, you don't really need to have Unreal open to, to solve some of these problems. Like some of these problems, you can just say, okay, I'll, I have a thing that I haven't fixed yet or designed yet. Um, you can draw it out. Just use the nodes that you, you can think of, you know, at least like if you mm. feel like it's a simple task to fix. And you can just draw it on like a napkin, man. It's cool. And then just come back and just make it like in a minute because you already kind of know what you're Yeah, doing. yeah. It's and like playing Lego in your brain. <laughs> yeah. It's playing Lego. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. It's a lot of fun, man. And um, let me just give you guys some scope, too, for those of you who are like, you know, interested in this. But, and even for those of you who are not. Those of you who are just like, well, I don't really care about making it. I just want to work in like the art field and entertainment as a concept artist, which a lot of you are. Um, they are like releasing some of the like the next like best tools to help you develop a amazing like world, like with very minimal effort, you know. Mm. And like they're they're patching 4.8 and it's going to basically like there's that the open world trailer have you, have you guys seen it with the kite and like yeah you know, it's, yeah it's, that's it's a beautiful amazing. trailer amazing so basically the, all that stuff's going to be pretty much uh, usable by 4.8 and 4.9 I believe right mm -hmm. and I think with Unreal 5 I think what they're trying to do one of their goals like they mentioned in one of their panels is something that are on like ongoing is to get rid of the idea of having low poly meshes as a requirement. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to solve this problem. 
It's been I a hope problem that's been around for decades. LODs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm talking about like, like you can bring in your four point five ten trillion model, and somehow the game engine will know how to decimate that in a very appropriate way. Whoa. So that way you could just bring it straight into ZBrush probably. And I don't know how they did but they, this is a problem that they're, like, everybody has been continuously trying to yeah, fix. There is, a, uh, there is a cloud-based company that does that kind of thing right now, and I think that's yeah. really why they feel... That I don't think, possible. yeah, I don't think it's far away. Like, I think, like, I in the next few them. years, like, this will go away, and then low-poly modeling will just be an option. You know? If they're talking about it, I'm pretty sure they're well into getting close to making it happen. Yeah, because they wouldn't they wouldn't be announcing yeah, they wouldn't like be that mentioning it at all. Yeah, if they weren't even trying. Like, so uh, Unreal not four, Unreal four is already up. Unreal five, I believe, is probably the future of that. I don't know. I don't. I don't work there. I don't know the dev. <laughs> if any dev is listening, he's like, uh, I can neither confirm or deny. <laughs> or he can say, I can completely confirm that that's bullshit, you know? Uh, because it, it, it's a hard thing to do. I know there mm. was like a Vox uh, a Vox system or like a, a Voxel system or like basically kind of like what Minecraft and uh, the game um, that's got like <laughs> procedural type yeah. gaming and stuff where or a software where they will basically, instead of basing it off of like, it's kind of like JPEGs versus Vector, where JPEGs is all about... Uh, JPEGs is all about, you know, like it's a rasterized, it's a complete image, or vectors math, right? And you can yeah. you can scale it up to be 17 miles wide and tall and scale it down to be like a couple inches tall um, with vectors with no no effect to the to the wow. image. Where JPEGs you can't do that, right? It's like a flat thing. If you scale it up, it's going to be rasterized, and if you scale it down, it's going to be into, like the like the it's going to be pixelized both ways, right? <clears throat> and so, basically, like the people like who, like for example, think about like ZBrush, how how you can run in ZBrush at such a high capacity, right? Um, and that's a s modeling software, and so something somewhere along the lines of that, and Mudbox and some of these sculpting softwares, they, they, there is some logic to how that can be created, right? It's the problem of how to implement that in like a game engine, you know? How to implement that logic into as like a vector based sense of logic. You know what I mean? And you that come way up you with can... some new new problems as well if you start using voxels. For yeah. example, animation, if you're trying to animate a a mesh Usually, it's got um, a skeletal rig in there, and it's got um, UV layers and stuff. But if your model is made of voxels, it's got none of that. It's a, it's little pieces of, like almost little atoms. So yeah, yeah. you're gonna have to try it. the the pipeline for animation of a voxel mesh would be totally different, and it, it, people have to start from scratch basically trying to work out how to animate. Yeah. If, they, if it, they're switching to voxels. But it will change the face of gaming, man. Oh, like, yeah, it'll definitely. Make games just as good as the cinematics or just as good as movies. You know what I mean? And it, it'll change the interaction between things in games as well. Instead of just having a solid thing like a mesh, voxels, you can take pieces off because it's made up of pieces. So you can, like, yeah. blow holes in them. And, um, like, real, like... Real, well, real holes that look like real yeah. guns. Oh, or you could make your model with an actual skeleton inside <coughs> with yeah. muscles um, on the outside and skin and then as you um, I don't know, as you pierce through the model or if you chop a limb off or something <laughs> we're getting a bit gruesome gonna, here I'm but you'd be able it. to see all those layers I'm going to call it, I'm going to give this 10 years and this is I say 3 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's a standard like it's going to be yeah, like crazy. Three? Oh, okay. Three years. Wait, wait, let's, let's get some... Oh, now you guys make me feel like I'm stupid. <laughs> All right, how about, how about five? I'll go five? You're going five. What about, what about you, Kayla? What do you think? Like, where you can just have, like, straight up... Doesn't matter. This, this number doesn't matter anymore. Polys like, isn't a thing anymore. Just how big... It, it just oh, where well, polys aren't, aren't relevant anymore. Oof. Whoa. Yeah. Three. Whoa. Three. Now, you, now you're in the world. <laughs> Three. Right, I'm adding one Check more out year. Shinra. Shinra Technologies. They've <laughs> almost cracked it. All right, I'm going to minus one here. 
I think this all depends on if there's a drought in California or not. Like, if we run out of water. <laughs> <laughs> that actually does it. Yeah, that's yeah. Like something there. It, it's funny because think about what, what was going on five years before. Like, like exactly. Like, yeah. five years bef like ago, yeah, like, there wasn't really iPhones. Like, iPhones were just coming out. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like ten hey, years ago, you yeah, ten years ago there was no YouTube. Yeah, well, think about, like, it's, it's crazy to think <laughs> that like back in my day, which was like when I was twenty, I there was no YouTube. That's crazy. I, I I'm not I'm still a young dude, and I can say yeah. like the yeah. huge technology did not <laughs> exist in my lifetime. You know, a lot of us are um, dads, <laughs> here, aren't we? I've got a little kid. He's um, three years old, and I'm thinking he's going to grow up. Not knowing that, um, like a touchscreen is quite a special thing. Not, yeah, <laughs> it's going to grow up with all that technology just as standard. Yeah, like, this is going to be everywhere. Standard. Like it's going to oh, be yeah. like on your car door. It's going to be on like your. It's going to be on your skin. You know, it's going to be in your contact lenses. I know. It's going to be dope. You know what's funny about that? It's like we okay. Well, so we've got a go to meeting open, Skype open, Ustream open. I've got all those three things open on my computer right now, and I'm also doing some like UVing on on a, a model in my <laughs> all of this stuff as we talk, as we speak. But the like the live phone call that I'm having with like how many of us are in here? Like five, six of us. Some of us on the other side of the planet. Some of us on the other side of the planet, and and, and that <laughs> yeah. is completely not important to me. I don't, I'm not even looking at your guys' faces. I mean, mm. Kaylin, Kaylin is the only other person with his face up. I'm not even yeah. looking. At and it. I don't. Yeah, put that smile. I'm not even face. looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so funny that I take all of this for granted now, and it took zero yeah. time for me to get totally used to it. But it was funny, like uh, like a couple of Easter's ago. We were having this like Skype conversation with my cousin who was like on the other side of the world, and my whole family sitting down like, oh, let's use Skype. And my grandma had never heard of this ever before, and as soon as the video call started, she, everybody was like talking like, oh, hey, how's everything in Spain and yeah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And my grandma was just like, <laughs> demon take. <laughs> <laughs> Her, the it's like her head is, this is the Jetsons, you know? Like, we were doing yeah. something that was, like, in James Bond in the 60s and all this kind of stuff, and we all thought this, like, oh, it'll never actually happen. I know, but man. we all kind of take it for granted now. <laughs> it's so yeah. weird. But it's really cool, isn't it? Well, how long do you think it's going to take for, like, this, like, this, basically, like, infinite polys? Or polys is going to be irrelevant, yeah, basically. You going to say three years, too? Kalen? Both Kalens, what do you guys think? Brendan? You probably have more knowledge on this than any of us, Brendan. Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually really really scared uh, because you know polygons is like everything right now. So to go to this whole like voxel system, like it's just it's a whole paradigm shift for everything that I've learned over the last you know 20 years that I've been working on this crap. You know, I'm, I'm well, actually really that's scared. Why you're get your sculpting <laughs> skills, man. Because that's I know, the man. thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with. Um, you know, I'll meet you at four. I'm gonna say four years. Oh uh, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, price is right all of you guys. Right? Yeah, three point five. I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go uh, with. I'm gonna say like two years. We're gonna start seeing people mess around with this stuff. Because two years, huh? Yeah. Go. Well, I mean, if you're talking about like fully featured, hey, integrated into Unreal, Indie Studios, yo, go ahead and start doing this stuff. It'll probably be a while, but I yeah. think, like, you know, maybe ILM might be messing around with stuff like this. Autodesk might be <laughs> some stuff like this somewhere, you know. I, some Disney. Who knows? Yeah. What would that mean for you guys, modeling something with infinite what, polys? Before, before we answer that question, Kalen, other Kalen, what do you think? Oh, yeah. Uh, what do I think? When is it going to... I don't know. Um, <laughs> right over his I head. wouldn't say. I'd probably say maybe in the next like ten years. I don't think it's as close as everyone thinks it is. Cause I think I don't know why I think that, but I feel like it'd be. I don't think it'd be any more than like than ten years. I originally thought ten years too, but I'm starting yeah. to doubt my own because like, because not even like a few months have gone by in this whole paradigm shift of independent yeah. developers, and I was expecting that to happen within the next year or two. Right, 
But then Patreon came around, and I was like, well, maybe not. Maybe fucking tomorrow, right? <laughs> yeah. And where people started using Patreon, like, religiously. Like, people were leaving their jobs because they were making money on their own, like, on a high, accelerated rate. Vine, there's some kids on Vine who are making tremendous amounts of money. YouTube making tremendous amounts of money. Just doing what they want to do. It's and a good thing. It's already happening. It's a very good thing. It's, it's, it's accelerating so quickly, man. There is like a whole indie development world <coughs> that is just growing every year because of people getting fired from their studios and now have to basically make a living because the you know there's <laughs> there's just too much opportunity for them to learn how to do it themselves. Unity, Unreal, and I believe it was uh, Valve, they released all their goddamn engines for free. Like, absolutely free. And yeah. you know, CryEngine and all the, like, Fox Engine are all probably going to follow suit pretty soon as well. You know? Especially when the numbers start coming in, when they see all these little indie developers. That, what if you're, like, the next guy who makes Flappy Birds, but you use Unreal Engine to do it? Right? Or the next guy who makes uh, Clash of Clans, but you use Unity? You know? Or if you're the next guy who built an, another one of these huge goddamn apps, like the next League of Legends, but they were using, you know, um, uh, Unreal, right? Mm. Like, Unreal is going to get a piece of that, you know? And they should, man, because their software is very useful and it's very good. Like, someone was like, well, they're taking 5% of your profits. And I'm like, dude, I have a free game engine. I know. <laughs> like, That's, I, I, I gladly uh, here's get what you're 5%. Me. Before, I couldn't make a game. It was very hard, or it was very unapproachable. Mm. At least it was very daunting. And now I have the ability to build a game, and they just want 5%? That's all they want? Like, I want them to have my 5% because they're going to make my game engine better. I basically yeah. am hiring a whole team to make the engine in which I love and use to be better. Mm. Right? And it, it, just saves, it saves you money as well because... The capabilities that you have, it's so easy to do stuff in Unreal that you don't need to like have a massive team to do stuff. You can have quite, you can get really yeah. good results. Like we've got with Celestial Cleave, that's only three guys that have made that. Um, uh, where a lot of us, there's one guy who's got a lot of experience coding. Um, I'm um, predominantly. Um, coming from a game design background who's just coming into coding and Brendan's um, showing his skills as a new um, 3D artist so we're not exactly the most um, experienced team and because Unreal is such a good technology we don't that 5% um, would have been would have been way outshone by the amount of money we'd have to spend on um, getting the the team, like getting the um, talent in to make a game like Celestial Cleave two years ago. Yeah. One year ago. Yeah, and I, I think, and here's the thing too, like if you don't like that, still, if you still, for whatever reason, stingy about that 5%, you can buy out. They give you that option too. Mm. Right? They're like you can, you can negotiate to, to completely own the license without worrying about them taking any more profit, right? Because, like, this whole free to, mo free to build model and free to make free to use is becoming very popular because we, the communities of these developers are working together to help each other build a, a better economy, man, and where everybody supports each other. And it's mm. cool, dude, and I'm, I'm happy to be, start to try to be part of that. <clears throat> and so for anyone who's, like, curious about, like, making a game and you're like, well, I don't know, like, like there really is no excuse for you at least not to try because yeah. the game engine is free, all of them. <laughs> right, like all, I mean, yeah, free, it's, all the most popular ones with the huge marketplaces are pretty free, and, and it's actually quite fun when yeah, you start. It, it's, it's not it's like hard fun. work. It is hard work, but it's fun as well. Anyways, so let's go ahead and just start going into like the Q and A. Um, this is definitely going to be heavily art driven. But if anyone had questions about what we were saying, to obviously you can ask questions about that too. Uh, <laughs> This is probably where it's going to switch over to be mostly me and Caleb, mm -hmm. Brendan. Uh, are if anyone us. does have any questions um, that they want to point to me, you can hit me up on Twitter at Blue Blaze Studio. All right. Well, Anytime uh, you want, we're pretty open. Skype, the actual naming of it and then drop it 
the U stream. Yeah, sure. So remember you guys' years. I'm at 2020. Brendan, you're at 2019. Me, 18, as well as John. Uh, Kaylin, you're at 2017. I'm, uh, or other Kaylin, you're at 2025. 2020. I think that's it, guys. I think I got you beat. No. <laughs> Tomorrow. Unreal. <laughs> Unreal's like, Unreal 5. <laughs> Voxel modeling. <laughs> you can rig whatever the hell you want and it gets automatically decimated. <coughs> what? Oh, man. Uh, first question says, uh, is for AJ. Do you still uh, do draw Pokemon traditionally? Oh, yeah. Actually, I was going to make a video after this about that. So, yes, I do. Uh, mostly when I'm studying. And now I'm doing it to like... Uh, but like I, I, I did it because it's like it keeps you from using undo. That's really why I do it. Because when you undo, it's like uh, it's like you get another chance. But if you have if you don't have that option, you just gotta stick with it, right? You just gotta deal with that. And whenever I'm studying, it's like one of the best options to get better at studying. Because like I just have to kind of know what I'm doing, you know. So yes, I I encourage like paper and pen. But I'm gonna actually be making a video. It's probably up like maybe in the next hour or so after this stream on my uh, on my Facebook. I just made a Facebook page. Um, here, I'll try to see if I can get you a link, John. And if you guys haven't, uh, if you guys are not, uh, oh, what the? Yeah, let me just post this. Yeah. Uh, if you guys do not, I thought I already shared that. I guess I did not. If you guys do not uh, already uh, follow my Facebook, my Facebook page I'm doing, what I'm going to be trying to do with that Facebook page is um, putting like content and videos of me talking about like doing book reviews and stuff like that, game reviews, like just things like that are artistically inclined, you know, talk about um, what I think is good or bad about like a certain art book, uh, and and show you how I would study and what the things I found are very useful, uh, all for free. Just you just gotta follow my robot pencils uh, Facebook page. What I want to try to do is make that page pretty popular, so that way whenever we advertise our mentorship and all that kind of good stuff that people uh, will have an opportunity to pay for. That way you guys can just go there and just see if there is anything you want. I can actually put a store on my Facebook page and everything too. So that's one of the main strategies. So, and I'll, I'm, I'm upfront about it too because I don't, that's what I'm using it for. I want to basically really have a streamlined place for me to post like relevant content and content that is like more career driven versus just my, my normal Facebook, which is still has that, but also post, like, you know, Pikachu on acid. Right. <laughs> is that, that's yeah. funny. That's funny to me. I will not post Pikachu on, on acid on my Facebook page. So if you want to see Pikachu on acid, follow my regular Facebook as well. <laughs> I saw a good Pikachu. Or, more importantly, if you want to see Pikachu on acid, go seek professional help. <laughs> no, don't do that either. Just, just go watch Pikachu on uh, on acid. All right, let's go ahead and take another one. Do you all prefer indie games to working at a big studio? Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. I love working at a big big studio because you know it's it's a big studio. Especially when I was working at Blizzard, it was freaking awesome. You're surrounded by tremendous amounts of talent. Everybody's freaking awesome. <clears throat> but when you're making your own game, man, it's like it's fun. You're on your, your your own boss, you know. Yeah. Um, you're just like I want this thing to do this thing, and like I'm making this game called Don't Wake Baby. And Kalen, uh, the evil Kalen, yeah, he's shaking his head. He doesn't think it's a good game, but dude. It looks pretty fun. Dude. We're trying to make it a good game, and we're having a good time. And even if it isn't a good game that people flock to and, and, and rave about, it doesn't matter. I learned a lot from making it, you know? Mm. And, and that was the goal. The goal is to try to get this game done in one month. You know, I started a, like late March, and I plan to finish it at the end of April. And just ship it. Oh, that's a you know? task. Yeah, that's why I wanted it to be very simple. I, I was coming yeah. up with too many game ideas that were too large, and I didn't know anything about blueprints or coding, and I was just like, it's, it's better to start somewhere than rather just on um, you know, high ambitions. You know, mm -hmm. I've done that too many times in my career to know that's not a good strat. You know? And yeah. so I'm like, right now I'm trying to just make something that I can actually make by myself if I have to. You know? Yeah. 
Uh, luckily for me, though, I have like people like uh, other Caleb who's also in the same situation where he's just trying to like learn the tool, and so we like share knowledge and help each other out. And like he's like, "Hey, I'm having this problem." I'm like, oh, "Okay, well, this is what I did to solve it." And he's like, "All right, sweet," and vice versa, you know. And I think that's, that's pretty what realistic. Development, you know, I like the look of it. Yeah, well, that's the, I think that's what indie development's going to be like, anyways, too, or, mm. or just helping each other build their own other people's games, you know? Yeah, like, definitely. Why not? Everyone seems pretty open in the indie scene. You know, we're all like we are now. You're helping us out with our Kickstarter. I'm sure we'll be able to return favors. We're all pretty open to be helping each other out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because nothing's corporate, right? Like, there's yeah, there's no shareholders states. or anything yeah. telling us to keep things a, um, a company secret. Have you got any company secrets that you need? <laughs> well, my game <laughs> is about sure. not waking up a baby, <laughs> so please do not steal this idea. Oh wait, no one cares about this idea. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I have it looks not any threat of, uh, of thievery and piracy. Great. Uh, yeah, right, you switch cool. that um, switch the torch for a mobile phone and put some <laughs> um, squeaky floorboards in there. You've got pa Baby Simulator 2015, Dude, like I or think Daddy Simulator make a ninja version of my game. Like, like <laughs> you guys you know, wants me to make it like a ninja game. Instead, he's like, "Fuck this baby stuff." He like totally like <laughs> talking like a Hollywood like producer. He's like, "You gotta drop this stuff. You gotta do it this way." And I'm like, "Yeah, you said it just like that." You're like, "This game's cool." I'm just saying. Uh -huh. Indirect, indirect, Anyways. passively aggressive. <laughs> well, well. What about you guys? Anyone else have anything they want to say about like working indie versus? Um, like, it's great. Uh, Kalen, you're you're working on an indie game. How how's that feel? I was talking uh, Black Kalen with. I know you're working on an indie game too. We'll get to you, other Kalen. All right, <laughs> Kalen, White Kalen and Black Kalen. Okay, so first Black Kalen, go. <laughs> My experience of working on Leech? Yeah, and versus like working on like let's say like ILM or um, like a lot. Uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, it's 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 nice because then you have more free time and you and you are your own boss. Um, I think sometimes it's hard because <coughs> the, the one trade off is you have to kind of be your own art director since I'm the only artist on it, and so sometimes that's kind of the trade off is if when you're working in a small team or you're working in like it's kind of hard to get that feedback sometimes that you need that usually other artists would provide you or other art director would provide you if you're at a studio. But I mean, I mean that's just one of the, the smaller trade-offs that I, I see. But other than that, like it's, it's cool because you can literally um, do whatever you want. I, I think maybe the dangerous part is sometimes when you can do whatever you want, you do whatever you want, and then it's <laughs> kind of hard because no one, no one keeps you in check. As like as if you had like a director or a producer, you know what I mean? So it's just kind of like you put out flyers as as they go uh, when you're working on it. But I mean, it is it is nice to uh, to I guess the idea for me is like the idea of seeking a of of seeking profits that go straight to me and and my partner John. Uh, I don't find him, but my coworker John. Uh, it's kind of cool. I mean, because usually like it's kind of sad. Like when you see. Uh, like all the people that work on movies, you know, like ILM and stuff like that. Not that's kind of an example, but like when you see credits for movies and stuff like that, like that's that's only like a percentage, like a small percent of everyone that's worked on it. But then like when when the credits roll or kind of stuff like that, they only give certain studios a certain amount of space to like put the top, like the people that worked on it the most. So you can work on it for a while I, and not I, even get your name in a credit. I had a supervisor, an animation supervisor on Superman. Didn't even get, or not Superman, uh, Spider-Man 3. Didn't even get credit. An yeah, animation it, supervisor. Yeah, and it's like, it's politics. A lot of times it's politics. And that's, that's really that unfortunate crazy. that there's all these people that like, I mean, not that, not that we do this for the credit anyway, but I mean, it would be nah. nice if you, if nah, you want that credit. credit. Definitely yeah. do it for the money. It is like I do it for the money, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it's <laughs> nice to know that when the game is finished, when when we finish it, that it will just say like Art Kalen, and then like, and then, you know what I mean? But it's also it's also it's also scary though because if people like hate the art or hate the game, then they're gonna be like, I fucking hate Kalen. So it's I know also exactly like where to ask for my refund. Yeah, exactly. Like people are gonna come after you. I would say because internet people are freaking mean. But like that—that that is one of the cool parts is that like you get to you get to receive the reward, you know? Because it's sad because and also in VFX, right? These some of these movies do really really well, right? They make millions of dollars, 
but they don't see that profit, you know, because they're just like a third party VFX studio. So it is nice to know that if I'm going to grind and work my ass off, at least I know like whatever I get, like I earned it. You know what I mean? As opposed to like some of these like other AAA studios, right? Like that make these big ass games, right? They're paying the artists, you know, an okay salary. And then they go, oh, we'll, we'll get you on the bonus. You know, when the, when the game comes out, we'll get you on the bonus. When the bonus comes out, we'll... We'll, we'll make up your salary, so don't worry about it. And then the bonus comes in, and it's not what you thought. And they're like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, the game didn't do that good, so we don't get your bonus. So, like, you put in all that work. Meanwhile, like, the VP and the CEO is getting millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And, like, but you made the game. <laughs> and you're just, like, sitting there <laughs> with not much to show for it. So, for me, it's, like, I'd, I'd rather I'd, – I, I can't picture myself being, like, 50, like, working for a dude, like, working for the man – uh, you know, which is AJ. He's the man. Can't picture that. <laughs> ever. Oh, or maybe I can actually. Cause AJ's like one of my best friends. But you know what I mean. Like I, I I'd rather like have something that, that I can pass it down or yeah. something well, that like is mine. I'd rather be working on my own projects. Well, let's talk I, about like let's talk about it like this too. Is that like there was a time where it was high risk, high reward to work on your your own project, right? You'd get a distributor, publisher, all that stuff on your side. They invest a lot of money on you. But it's you and your small team, and you have to do a good job, or you have to owe a lot of money to a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. But now that's changed. So now it's like really no risk other than your time and your reputation. And high reward, right? Yeah. If it's successful. If, there, if it's not successful, you're like, well, let me try again. Yeah, times, yeah. times have changed for that for sure. I mean, yeah, the, but there used to be a time where you, you, that was a legitimate fear and concern on why you wouldn't want to start your own thing, right? Because like that, because like it's the same thing that like you guys are going through. Like you guys have that same situation um, as well, you know, where you guys can really like you get, you guys have a very minimal amount of risks at this moment. I know you guys are also looking into getting more um, uh, what you call it uh, investors, but it's like every time you get one more or another investor in, on board, you increase your risk, right? Because that means that's that's how much more the the game has to be successful, right? And I think it's important for anyone who starts their own project, you know, just keep that in mind. Keeping that in mind that you are, you are, you are potentially going to be a victim of your success or lack of success. The more money that is invested in it, that is outside of your own pocket, right? Yeah, that's very true. Like we we've had people that wanted to kind of like <laughs> possibly talk to us about maybe helping us out or wanting to be a part of it. And each time, like John's kind of like, "No, I'm I'm good," and I'm yeah, like, "It's got to be a real good deal, right?" Where there's like, it still keeps you at the low risk, right? Yeah, but it's one of those things where it's like, for us, it's kind of like, I know for for John, it's like, "Well, I just don't want to have to owe anyone anything, so I'd rather just just do it myself, so I don't have to worry about other people." So for us, it's like we're always keeping the team like as small as possible for that kind of reason, and and it's nicer that way because then again, you don't feel like. You uh you have to owe anyone, so it's like if you fuck up, the only person's life you may possibly kind of screw up is your own. You know, there's, there's not anyone else. And I don't think you'll screw up too much, right? You just you just devoted a lot of time and you learned a hard lesson. I think that's probably the. Well, well, look at look at like Phil Fish, right? Like that guy, like he made the Fez. That was like an amazing game, but everyone hates that dude. <laughs> like no, then again, he kind of invited it, but more right? to do with Phil Fish than the game. Yeah. He, he was a hothead, man. He just could not take criticism. Yeah. Just, and so, he, like, he, 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 sold, he sold his game because everyone was just, like, giving him shit. And I'm just like, well, yeah, he, he may not be, like, the best, like, the best personality guy, but, like, I don't pay him for his personality. Like, I pay him for <laughs> Fez. But now he's, like, not even going to make any more games. And, I'm like, I love Fez. That's kind of, like, it's kind of sad. Yeah, like, yeah. Don't I also think that's the um, vocal minority that's giving him shit. I bet there's a thousand times more people that really like what he did and respect Love him it. for yeah. being an, being an artist and doing what doing what he did with Fez. That is almost it's a always truly awesome game. Yeah, that is almost always true, man. Like um, every time I see like a video of a dog being rescued or a dog rescuing somebody on YouTube, I'm like, oh, that's freaking awesome. And then I look in the likes and dislikes. There's like twenty thousand likes and like. 100 dislikes. Mm. <laughs> Those people do not like dogs 
asshole. They're just like, fuck that dog. How dare you try to save a man? Like, I, but I think it's also like trendy to hate on people, like on certain times. Like, I think a lot of times, like people just post like an article, and then it just gets like the hate train. Like, I'm pretty sure you see all these kind of articles all the time of like some person that did something bad, and then everyone's just like, it just goes viral. You know, it's like one share, one retweet. And then everyone just like, oh yeah, fuck this guy. But then like no one knows the full story. And then like, I feel like stuff like that can really get out of control. It kind of yeah, sucks. It's crazy. Man. It's crazy, yeah. man. You're right. Like I, I was like just getting some uh, groceries today, and I saw uh, Kim Kardashian is didn't even get her or got like got dumped on her uh, anniversary, and I was like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> who cares about it? like? Uh, I was just thinking like, and I was like, but you know what sucks about this is like. Like, I, she gets, she sees this, you know. I, I, as much as you may not like the Kim Kardashian, she's still a human being, right? She's still a person yeah. in this world. She just happens to have all this stuff. Like, there's, I know people that are like her that are my friends, you know, <laughs> like some of my good friends. It's just she just happens to be in the spotlight, right? Yeah, it's, it's really, it's really easy it's to like. It's like, kind of sad. Like, I'm like, well, that you don't like know. this whole Justin Bieber thing too. Like, someone, oh, he's throwing eggs at people's houses. Fucking hoodlum. I was like, I do eggs at people's houses as a teenager. <laughs> the difference is he's Justin Bieber, right? Like, he's well, not allowed to do that because he has tons of money. Like, no. Yeah, I think it's like, you know, nothing when you're in about that spot, like, every, every year there's, like, that person that you got to hate. And, like, it's kind of it's kind of like that South Park or, like, the uh, the Harvest with, like, Britney Spears. <laughs> Remember that episode? Yeah. Where, like, it's so true that, like, every year there's, like, someone that everyone just has to hate on. Even if they don't know anything about him, like they don't, you know, and that that kind of it's like scary being in the limelight, being that popular. Like I don't want to be that popular in games. That's what happens. To, that, that's what happened to um, what's his face, um, the guy with Fez, man. Like that's just what happened. Like he exactly. It's so like what Dean he, said. Like if if he would have paid it, like I have a friend that was going through the same stuff, like in the art world, and uh, he he felt like there would be like one out of a thousand people that would say you fucking suck. Fucking, you suck. Your you suck. Your artwork sucks. You suck. Everything about you sucks. Suck. 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 Right? <laughs> and he'll get so mad at it, and he'll just like respond to them, and like and just go into this long like flame war with you know this complete random person, stranger. <laughs> and right around that, like around that one like bad comment, there was thousands of people saying you're like the my inspiration. You're like one of the greatest artists I've ever seen. Like oh, I wish I could learn how you do. How you do the things you do, but he like like the, I imagine him walking through a crowd where everyone's trying to give him flowers and money and like hugs, and he sees a one guy flipping him off, and he's like pushing everyone aside to go like talk to that one guy, like why are you flipping me off, man, right? Yeah, and, and it's like no, just ignore the guy that's flipping you off. It's like all right, well why did you come to my fucking showing? Get out of here. <laughs> it's like, well, I, I'm sure. I'm sure for him. Like, time, but sometimes people can get so personal. And I mean, yeah, it's probably like it's, it's probably. But you have to think about like the numbers. So like, uh, one of the guys said, yeah, like it's probably like a small group out of millions of people. But like, even to one person, like thousands of people that just hate you, even if you have yeah. millions that love you, that's still like a lot of people <laughs> that yeah. like don't like you. But, and I, I imagine that if I had thousands of people just writing me all the time like telling them they hate me like yeah. i'd probably it'd probably get to me at to some degree well, i don't know if yeah, i would write about it absolutely but. so that's why you have to put things in context kind of like what dean was saying you have to think about the like well if that's going to happen then think about the other people on the other side of the fence who that's are why i don't want to be famous like you can be famous i'll just, I'll just sit in the background man like yeah, that's yeah. why i tell john i'm like i tell our I was my partner john i'm like you can get all the credit dude like you can go to all the meetings and stuff like that like all like the panel discussions like i'll just sit in the back don't like, sabotage them dude what are you doing? Like, <laughs> take some of that weight off of his shoulders. <laughs> like, I'll do the art and I'll chill. It's, kind of, it's exactly what happened to you. Remember when you posted that, like, that funny, like, sexist thing? And oh. then, like, everyone fucking blew up at you. Everyone got and mad. I'm like, how quickly you forget that this guy's been giving you, like, $3 tutorials and, like, fucking, like, paying for your education. Like, I didn't really do anything bad either. I was just saying, hey, women Exactly, are, right? It's women, that's what I'm women saying. Women or men like, are equal. You know, people, you can't be telling people what people, to do no matter what. People turn on you so quick, man. It's, There's it's a quote crazy. from Bette Midler, I think, that said, uh, like, if if everyone likes you, then you're dull or something like that. Like, if everyone likes you, then you're you're a, a boring person. Right. Uh, I mean, honestly, if you post something like that, uh, then, you, like, the gamer, like, Fanboy, like there's this weird section of gamers that are like violently anti-feminist, and I really don't understand these people. 
but if you post anything that is even like remotely like hey women are equal we should try to do a little bit better maybe then all these guys are like whoa what the fuck oh gamergate and all this weird stuff and like remember <laughs> that person that posted on ages yeah. wall of like another yeah, artist right. that to just to just draw and not talk i was like oh, yeah. oh, I was like cracking up. Like, I was like, "Damn!" Well, I'm not worried about it, man. It's just time. Time will yeah. like cure all this stuff. Like Penn, Penn from Penn and Teller, he was in like a discussion about the whole Indiana thing with like the the gay stuff, and like uh, like they're like, "What was your opinion about this, Penn?" And he was like, "Well, like time, time will cure it all. Don't worry about it." And then it's like, I mean, look at all the other stuff that clearly are wrong that has literally gone away. You with- know what? You know what's happening there, right? Which is kind of funny. Is like. Now all the gay people keep trying to like give them their business, and then like they keep saying no, and now it's now it's becoming like this moral ground where they're just like, how many people can I turn down before like it's economically like not smart? <laughs> <laughs> so now like these people are just like, fuck! I could have made like five grand a day if I would have made if I would have baked like these eight cakes for these gay people, but I keep saying no. Yeah. So like they're just turning down money, and now <laughs> there's like, really like this internal struggle. Yeah. Oh yeah, like, you don't live in America. Like, we got some <laughs> stupid shit going on right now. Like okay, I've you guys on the news like, about some stuff. Yeah. You guys want to pretend like like denying gay people service is like part of your religious freedom or whatever. Okay, do that, you assholes. But at the same time, you can no longer now accept any of your uh, products from companies that hire even one gay person in order to stay consistent. So, like, if they order their, like, they have a cake, a bakery or something, and they order icing from a company that has a gay person working for the icing company, then you're not allowed to order icing from that person anymore. You have to make your own icing. You have to, if you choose to live in your stupid, crazy bubble, then you really have to live in your stupid, crazy bubble. Otherwise, you're a hypocrite. Otherwise, <laughs> you're a hypocrite. And it's painfully obvious that you're just doing this to, to, to be an asshole, yeah. not because you actually feel like your religion is being infringed upon. It's crazy. Yeah, people are, people are allowed to, to have their opinions and do all that stuff. But I agree, man. Like, as long as. Like as being as long as there's no harm in it, right? Like if you're truly fucking not harming anyone and, and better yet if you're just staying consistent, right? Like then then it's really hard for anyone to really dispute you, right? Like if you're just hardcore, like I seriously do not like gay people, like at all. Like I don't even look at the color pink. You're like, what does that have to do with gays? I just don't look at it. <laughs> like, all right, wow, well, he's like that person's real committed, you know? Yeah, at least they're, at yeah. least they're committed. Like, they're yeah, open about yeah, yeah. it. Like, I can respect I mean, because it. you can't tell them that they can't do what that is as stupid as it is. Um, no if way. If you tell them you what they can do, that. then then it, you start to go into that same circle of hypocrisy, right? And so <laughs> it's like people are allowed to be fucking dicks, <laughs> you know? But <laughs> there comes a cost, right? There definitely really comes a cost in public opinion. You know, yeah. Like, but, like if you look at like that racist thing that was going on with the basketball team, I don't really watch basketball. Like, what was the guy with the owner of the Knicks? Um, uh, was like pretty right. clearly Atlanta racist. Hawks or, or Clippers? Uh, Clippers. That's what. <laughs> well, there were more than one. Yeah, well, there's a there's in, in Atlanta. There's a the the owner. Uh, <laughs> okay. Long story short, is, the owner the owner is like we don't want to like we need we need more white people to come to the games because. All the that come into the games is black people, and they scare the white people, and black people aren't family, so they don't bring their sons because they're like they're like it's like they're deadbeat dads, and it like it cre- it created a huge fucking thing. But the funny part is like they're like number one in the Eastern Conference now, like now they're winning games, so now the owners kind of like oh shit, what's up guys, <laughs> and they're just like fuck you. Yeah, and and here's the here's the 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 reality. You know, you're allowed to be racist, right? But people just fucking. <laughs> Well, no, like, granted, like granted it's not your fault, freedom to believe like, a stupid like idea. A of, like you're better than someone else. You know, you're you're really are allowed that freedom of thought. You're not allowed to act upon it, right? You're not allowed to go there and start like fucking mm. literally like hanging some people or like firing people because of their race, right? Yeah, but and, if you're being racist, or I mean, if you're allowed to be racist, or you're allowed to be homophobic, the other people are also allowed to not be um, take the piss out of you for being homophobic or for yeah. being racist. For they're allowed, yeah, they're to, allowed to say that take the asshole. mick out it's of you of, for kind of being dumb. <laughs> because that guy, no, you're allowed was, to tell them that they're an asshole. Like Kalen said that those yeah. guys are assholes, and he's allowed to say that. Yeah, you know, just like they're saying stupid shit that we don't believe in as well. Like they say that this is not a thing you should do. Right, and this 
but that's when you start up acting upon it. That's when you start breaking laws. You know, yeah. that's when you start breaking yeah. fucking laws. He did. He did. He did. Well, like I don't have a problem with what he said because, like, granted, that was a private conversation, and the girl recorded it, and then like, <laughs> and then blitzed the it public. So it's like in the privacy of your own home, like you're saying some like maybe borderline racist shit, and someone records it and puts it in the internet. We're, we're always of, afraid of what people hear us say at our own office. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. If people like, like something like, we said that we joke around, we'd be in trouble. So I can't hate on him, but what? But more so, like back in the day, he was like denying housing to to minorities for yeah, that. That's not cool, man. Yeah. You can't be doing that shit. See, we, I, we're past that. There's a big difference, though. Like, I mean, you can tell. Like, it, okay, if a comedian yeah. goes up there, like if Jim Jeffries goes up and he says some crazy like stuff about women, <laughs> like black people, or something like that, it's almost admissible because it's Jim Jeffries and because he's a comedian it's just like oh it's context silly. he's so funny and in that context it's okay it's, but mm. it, if you say stuff like that outside of that context it's not okay anymore and I was thinking about this because like anytime I go see AJ or Kaylin or something we always make all these racist jokes and <laughs> it's like it's it's funny for us because we know each other but then if you're doing a stream like there's a bunch of people I don't know who's watching like I don't I don't you know, it could. Somebody it's does like, what, what, what did you think that guy? Like, I'm just, I'm just kind of weird out because everyone was like shocked when, when he said those things, and I'm like, I what did you think he thought? Like, but, no, but so, like, if you, somebody says something like that and you get caught, it's kind of like, good, you were caught. Now we have yeah. a reason to get rid of you because we got well, that's, um, that's why, like, I'm saying, like, like. You don't say that stuff, right? Because you are going to be castrated. Like, think about what happened to us. Especially Mills. if you really believe it. Yeah, absolutely. You like, really think about how happened to definitely Mel, don't say it. Think about what happened to Mel Gibson, and he, I don't think he entirely believed in the things he believed in, mm. but he got caught, right? It destroyed him, and it destroyed him. It's yeah. Like Robert Downey Jr. had was an alcoholic, and he had, or he had like you know drug abuse, but he can come back from drug abuse. Everyone can forgive drug abuse. Mm. And, but they don't. No one fucking forgives racism or homophobia. You know that kind of stuff, and that's why. Like that's what I'm trying to say. Like Penn and Teller. Like Penn from Penn and Teller said. Like this shit will just all be fixed in time, right? Yeah. Like it just, and just also knowledge will just it'll be fixed in time. Just be patient, right? Time and education. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, am hoping on that, and I believe in that truly, right? Because I, I'm on the side of like freedom of thought and freedom of expression, and people are still thinking this way, and this sucks. But eventually, like, my kids aren't going to think that way, you know? And then their kids aren't going to think that way. And their friends aren't going to think that way. If your kids thought that way. Huh? You'd be extremely hypocritical if your kids thought that way. They can't. They're, they're almost... If, if, one of, if my kid marries, like, one of your kids, <laughs> yeah. it, would be, it would come full circle. Yeah, it, everybody's going to... Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> know or be... You're very close in America. Yeah, like, yeah. like, I... Like my kids will know gay people, and my kids will have known like will have a dip in every race, right? You know, it's like it, it just it is will be impossible, and like.